Hello, sports fans and Stratomatic fans out there. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And I have an update for you. I know you've all been waiting with bated breath, sitting on your hands, waiting for this update. So, I'm going to update you on the Elmwood Stratomatic League that I am a member of, which has just completed its regular season. And as you know, I am the GM of the Providence Grays in this league. And we will take a look at the um, final standings. And there they are. As you can see, my Providence Grays just missed the playoffs. Missed it by that much, as uh, Maxwell Smart would say. We won 90 games this year. And we missed the playoffs by one game to the Desert Dogs. And congratulations to the Desert Dogs. We had quite a um, quite a pennant race with them. And there was quite the pennant race in the other league as well. As you can see, uh, the Washington, uh, Washington Manor made the playoffs uh, with 86 wins as a second-place team in their division. And New York and St. Louis also made the playoffs in their division with 86 wins. Um, or no, no, the Knights. The Knights made the uh, playoffs with 86 wins. And St. Louis just missed also with 85 wins. So they just barely missed out by one game just like I did. Now, St. L- and St. Louis was 7-3. and three. In their last ten games, while the others were um, six and four and five and five, so St. Louis came on strong near the end, but they just couldn't make it to the playoffs. So um, on the um, on the other side of the league, where the Island and Southern divisions are, you're going to have uh, Kremlin and New York making the playoffs, along with Painted and Washington. And on my side of the league, or in my whatever my side of the league, I guess. You're going to have Keikianga and Adams making the playoffs along with Federal Way and the Desert Dogs. Now, uh, the pennant race, when I say this pennant race was one for the ages, I mean, I mean it. Um, w- within 162 games, not needing a one-game playoff, uh, this pennant race was about as close between the me and the Desert Dogs, the Desert Dogs and I, as you could get. Um, going into the last series of the year, we had both won 88 games. He had three games against Endwell, which, as you can see, is not a very good team, or at least they weren't this year. And I had three games against Adams, which, as you can see, is a playoff team. So I had to at least do exactly what he did, or one game better, over the span of three games, uh, which would be tough when I'm playing a good team, and he is playing a team that's not that good. But he finished the season 10-0. and His last 10 games, he was 10-0. and I was 6-4. and So um, let's take a closer look. Let's go to Providence and go to Team Stats, and let's page down. And, and, and you can see this is actually kind of cool, too. At home, I was 45 and 36, and on the road, I was 45 and 36. I had no advantage one way or the other, whether I played on the road or played at home. Um, and uh, what really hurt me was in extra innings, I was 7 and 12. If you're even, you know, well, obviously, if you're even one game better, you're tied with the Desert Dogs. Um, uh, but I was 24 and 24 in one run games. You really can't ask for too much better than that. Um, but if you if, if you look here, um, I was 30 and 27 against the other division, and I was 29 and 18 against my own division, which you always want to be. And Federal May made the playoffs. I was six and five against them. Um, the Desert Dogs made the playoffs. I was 7-5 and five against them. Uh, on the other side, Adams Family made the playoffs, and I was 8-4 and four against them. And 
uh, Keiki Anga made the playoffs, I was four and six against them. So, on my side of the league, of all of the playoff teams, the only one I had a losing record against was Keiki Anga. I had a winning record against everyone else. So, um, you know, um, take that for what it is. Uh, let's take a look at my final statistics, team stats. Um, we'll go to primary statistics, move myself over here a little bit, move the uh, statistics over a little. And so you can see um, really where, we, where our downfall was was offensively. The team hit 245 as a team. Um, and we only had uh, 154 home runs in 162 innings. So that's really where my downfall was. And even considering that, I still won 90 games, let's bear in mind. So you, that gives you a good indication of just how good my pitching was. Um, Harper hit 291 with 15 home runs. El Tuve hit 284 with 30 home runs and 33 doubles. Um, Jimenez had uh, 23 home runs for me. Now, there was a couple of keys here offensively. Even though I wasn't good offensively or as good offensively as other teams and really not even really good, um, there was a couple of keys that came through for me. Harper, as you can see, played 109 games. He had a high injury on his card, but he still managed to play 109 games for me. And Jimenez, who also had a high injury rating on his card, managed to play 146 of 162 games for me. So that was key. Another thing that was key was uh, Andrus here was my shortstop. He, um, in real life, I think only hit like 240 or 243. But for me, he hit 266. And for most of the year, he was in the 270s. And he hit 13 home runs against really nine, something like nine home runs in real life. And he stole 26 bases, was only caught five times. So Andrus had an above average year or above what his card would have indicated he might have done type of year. Um, so those were a couple of keys offensively for me that helped me out. Um, but now on the pitching, you can see the pitching was excellent. Um, Jason Adam had a 140 earned run average for me. Verlander was, um, what is that, 18 and 8 or something? I can't really see. A little blurry, but I think it's 18 and 8. With a 216 earned run average in 233 innings. Um, Luis Garcia, I traded for Luis Garcia uh, shortly after the season started, and he had a 290 earned run average for me in 133 innings. Cueto had a 308 earned run average for me in 195 innings. Um, and then you can see, you know, some of the relievers here. Now Hendricks, Hendricks, I'm going to have Hendricks is going to be good for me next year. He had a 336 earned run average. He was limited, though. He only had 84 innings on his card, so I couldn't pitch him any more than 84 innings. Ended up pitching him 77 and two-thirds. Um, and so that's, um, you know, and, and I'll have him again next year. So I'll let you guys take a quick look at this team. I will discuss later, like in the offseason, we'll discuss my offseason prospects, but I think they're pretty good because a lot of these guys I have coming, a lot of the same guys are coming back. Harper's coming back, El Tuve's coming back, Jimenez will come back, um, Kana's coming back, um, and then, you know, I'm, I've got Verlander coming back, and... Um, and, uh, you know, almost all of these relief pitchers will come back next year, too. Yarbrough, Yarbrough was not that good, in, and he only had limited play. But in real life, he's doing great for the Dodgers right now. And, um, and uh, Tanner Scott. Tanner Scott was terrible for me in 2.2 innings pitched. But in real life, he's great. So, um, yeah, we'll see. I, I think we'll be competitive again next year. But, um, let, yeah, let's go back to the state. Well, let's go to New York because I want to point out something with New York. Team stats, they had, um, they had uh, Judge on their team. And let's see what Judge finished with. Judge finished with 80 home runs. 80. 
80 home runs and 147 RBIs, which really, 147 RBIs is kind of low considering you had 80 home runs. Um, and he had 24 doubles. Kind of like, it's kind of like what Kevin Moss did for me back in <laughs> back in the day. Uh, we played a season where Kevin, I don't remember how many home runs Kevin Moss had for me. Um, I think it was... I don't, I don't, th- I don't know if it was eighty. I think it might have been like 70, 60 or seventy. I don't remember, but yeah, eighty home runs for Judge. I mean, that's crazy. And uh, I guess we can go and take a look uh, league stats, and we'll go to um, league leaders. And you know, I'm just gonna let you guys take a look at these. Hopefully, you can see enough to see them. The batting average leader was McNeil of the Desert Dogs. He hit 355. Judge hit 332. Goldschmidt of Adams hit 310. Now, what you'll notice here is I don't have anybody on this list, and that's the thing. Um, you know, offensively, there I don't. You're not going to see many uh, Providence guys on here. And again, that was that was my downfall this season. If I had had one more guy. At a position where I had a mediocre hitter, but um, but actually had like a great hitter instead in that spot, or even a very good hitter, I I probably would have made the playoffs. But you know what can you do? So uh, you know, run scored. Judge scored 138 runs. Goldschmidt scored 111. Again, I'm not going to harp on all of these. Um, let's go down to the home runs and see. You had Judge with 80, Pujols of the Desert Dogs hit 50, 50 home runs from Pujols. Um, Trout had 46 for the Desert Dogs. So see, this is what I was up against. And still, I will remind you, I only lost out to them by one game. Um, Schwarber of Adams hit 45 home runs. Uh, and Judge, of course, knocked in 147, as we just saw. Pujols knocked in 131. So let's go down to let's go down to stolen bases. Let's see if my man made it. Um, does yes, Andrus did make that list. He had 26 stolen bases. He was fourth, or really, um, he was really uh, effectively third in the league because two were tied for second but third or fourth in the league in stolen bases, or tied uh, with Edmund. Um, hitting streaks, let's see if I had anybody on a hitting streak. Not really, no. So uh, let's go down to, um, well, let's take a look at total average. You had Judge with a 1.332, Trout with a 1041, Vogelbach with an 1021. Now, one thing you're going to notice here, you've got Trout, Desert Dogs, but Trout next year, you're going to have a high injury on his card and maybe not going to be able to play that much. Uh, offhand, I don't know how many at-bats he has right now, but uh, he'll be limited next year, so that'll help me. So anyway, let's go down to uh, the pitching. Yeah. So for wins, uh, Verlander actually is, is kind of down the list. He only had 18 wins. Um, winning percentage, I had Verlander at 692. He's kind of still down the list. but uh, And really, even innings pitched, he had 233 for innings pitched. Now, Alcantara had 260. I don't think, uh, well, we'll see what... Uh, happens with that. But anyway, 260 innings pitch for um, El Contra, I guess is what his name is pronounced like. But for ERA, I had the top guy, and that was Verlander, 216. Um, uh, let's see. And I had Cueto near the bottom of the list, but at least he was on the list. Um Games started 40 games. Dunning started 40 games. I didn't have anybody on that list. Uh, games pitched. Did not have anyone on that list. 
complete games, I did not have anyone on the list. So anyway, um, so anyway, I, you know, we'll just page down here a little bit if you want to stop on something and take a look. You can take a look, but that's uh, that's how it happened. And let's see where I am for, let's see, league, league stats, standings, award voting. Let's see where I was on award voting, because I am never even considered for manager of the year. And guess what? I still wasn't even considered for manager of the year. <laughs> 90 wins for the first time in years, maybe a decade, and uh, over a decade. And I didn't even get considered for manager of the year. So, I mean, it, at some point during the season, I probably was in there, but um, no, not on it now. So, that, uh, so there, there you go. Let's go back. I'm going to just take one last look at the standings, let you guys take a one last look at the standings. The way we finished, again, I finished one game out of playoff contention. I missed the playoffs by one, one game. And I went two and three in my last three games, but the Desert Dogs, hats off to them. They went three and oh. So, um, that's how it finishes, and uh, that is going to be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.